Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome please hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up and let's see if we can get this channel to 10,000 subscribers I'm your host known as Dougal and welcome let's get cracking Morning, everybody. I've got some major tired eyes going on this morning. I've just dropped off Mila and Sarah at the front of the Sheffield Children's Hospital, and uh, we are about to embark on a pretty heavy day today. I tell you something: if I didn't have to work late at night time, I would be an early riser every single day. It's so lovely getting up early; it makes you feel so much better about the day, even though it's. T it's hard initially getting up. It makes you feel, makes me anyway, feel so much better about the day when I'm up at this time of the day. It is 7.10 at the minute. And um, it's just been beautiful seeing the sunrise this morning. It's so nice, I haven't seen the sunrise in a while. So that was really nice. So as a lot of you guys will know, Six weeks ago, just a little bit over six weeks ago, Mila went, underwent surgery to repair a thing called DDH, Developmental Displacure of the Hip. Which you For that is basically that she's in a cast with on her legs, her full body cast basically for six weeks initially, and then they remove the cast, which is today, and I don't know what's up with my voice today. So sorry, it's too early for my voice to even work. So today's the day that they put her back under general anesthetic and they remove the cast, check that the hip is healing the way it should be, and if it is, then they recast her up again for another six weeks, and we do basically what we've just done again, and then after that she has it taken off and she goes into a brace for 12 weeks. Weeks. And then all being well, she'll be healed and good, and she, and that's it. End of treatment. She's fixed basically. Um, but today is a big deal because today is like the turning point where it's either worked or is working or it's not. So if it's not working, this is the point where they'll abandon treatment until she's about 18 months old. And um, really, really hoping that that is not the case and that everything is all good today. And um, and we can look forward to this little chapter all being over by like her first birthday. Okie dokie. I broke my jigsaw yesterday so I had to get myself a new one. What we got here we got some bits and bobs, some drinks and pyjamas. So Mila's surgery is scheduled for 8.45 this morning but it was delayed till 10 or just after 10 last time. So they don't let two parents onto the surgical pre-op ward kind of thing. So uh, Sarah's on there now with her, and then, like last time, I'm going to be taking her down to the theatre. So I just need to wait and um, go and make myself comfortable somewhere until they're ready. morning everyone I'm not sure what Chris has filmed already because I've been with Mila and he's been there was only one parent allowed in the pre-op assessment ward but he's just taken Mila down now I've given Chris the job again because oh I just really don't like well no one likes it but I just feel like Chris can <laughs> deal with that better than me I'm um, he's taken her down now to theatre so I'm just waiting for him to come back 
basically. It only took 10-15 minutes last time so hopefully it won't take much longer this time. I don't actually feel as bad this time. Last time I just felt so sick with nerves. I think it's because she's just getting like the cast changed this time and just like make sure there's been progress rather than an actual operation. Fingers crossed they said that they shouldn't need to um, do any sort of intrusive thing um, as long as the hip feels like it's staying in place when they wiggle it around. If it's unstable they might have to put a dye in um, and then ultrasound her like that but hopefully they won't need to do that. They said only about 20% of cases they need to do that and 80% they don't so fingers crossed. Mila herself is not in as good a mood this time as she was last time. Um, I'll insert a picture now of how cute she was when we were just sat like in the pre-op assessment unit but then as soon as anybody came near her like to put a wristband on to take her orbs she literally did not like it so I don't feel like this um, getting her off to sleep will go maybe maybe as easy as it was last time even though last time it wasn't exactly easy but she's already on the edge today so hopefully um, they get her off to sleep and she'll be able and uh, she's hungry as well this time I can tell she's hungry don't feel like it affected her last time because she slept pretty much right up until they took her down to theatre but this time she's been awake for like an hour an hour and a half now so anyway hopefully Chris will be back soon and we won't be waiting two hours we had a two hour wait last time Hopefully it won't be quite as long this time. So it's 9.08 and we've just said our goodbyes to Mila for now. Um, that was really brutal. We'll give you like a proper rundown of everything that happened when we've got back to the ward and it's a bit more kind of calm and chill and, and we can speak properly. I'm in the toilet right now because really busy everywhere so I don't want to catch anyone in the back of the footage by accident or anything like that. Uh Um, we're just literally sat in Costa right now. We've got a little buzzer like last time. We've got to just wait till that goes off and we can go back to, to get her. But um, she, I took her down to the theatre room and I was with her when they put her to sleep like last time. And it was just horrible. It was really horrible. She, it was much worse this time because she, she clearly remembered from last time. And, uh, and whenever anyone came near her with a blue mask on or, or gloves, uh, she just freaked out so bad. And she did not do that last time. And then she really struggled when she was going under and stuff. And it was just horrible. But the staff were amazing. Like, they were apps can't fault them whatsoever. They're so lovely. Um, so, so lovely. They're like, <laughs> sounds really silly, but when they were putting the mask on her face, uh, I was singing a song to her, like, she's got me two eyes. <laughs> um, that I sing to her to make her relax and calm down and um, I couldn't see because I had so many tears in my eyes um, and the the, the, the anaesthetist uh, guy who was with us he just got some tissue and like wiped my eyes which I thought was really lovely. And he was like yeah, it's okay dad and, like, we've all been there we know how you're feeling right now etc and it was it was just really nice. Um, so uh, I'm going to go back to Costa um, and join Sarah. We've got about an hour, an hour and a half of a wait before the beeper should go off. It could be sooner, it could be later. Um, depends on how things go. So uh, we will touch back with you guys when we know more. Just patiently waiting now. Fingers crossed not too long. So we've had a Costa and I know they say don't panic if it takes longer than an hour, but you can't help it. <laughs> I think before because they said it could take up hours and it was less than two hours right it felt better, yeah. it felt better because we we're going down sooner
what, it's been like an hour and a half now. I'm starting to freak out, which I know I shouldn't. Um, I think the main reason I'm, f I'm feeling really anxious is because they said that it's unlikely they'd have to do an incision and insert all the dye, and, and they'd only do that if they thought it wasn't working or if the hip wasn't stable when they did the external examination. And so because it's taking much longer, now I'm feeling like, what if they've had to do that? Because that's not what we want. We want the hip stable because that means it's working. <sighs> Can't help freaking out. Well, I'm not freaking out. I'm just like, oh, we just sat staring at the buzzer <laughs> Come on, for the last on. hour and a half. Come on. Come on. <sighs> the waiting is the worst. Is the mind just goes into overdrive. Yeah, your mind just goes crazy, like, absolutely just goes crazy and it won't stop. Um, I felt really bad for Mila as well because I might as well have this chat now because it stops me from thinking. But she definitely remembered from last time because every, she was in such a good mood. I showed you the picture before. But every single time anybody came near her with a blue mask on, she freaked out, like properly freaked out screamed, gr grabbing at me, clutching at me, cried, s burying her head in my neck. Yeah, totally out of character. Really out of character. She's usually such a smiley baby, even with like e with everybody. Um, but they came over just to give her a gown, she screamed. They came over to do a temperature and her obs, she screamed. I don't even know if I've already said this. I said it in the time. I might have already said this. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. I need to talk to take my mind off things. Um, and then obviously when Chris took her down to theatre, as soon as she saw the mask, she was like, nope. <laughs> but you said it was, um, she went off quicker this time, which is good. Oh, come on. It's not bussy. <laughs> we'll keep you guys updated. Thank goodness. So it's been about an hour and 45 minutes and they've told us to come and sit in this little family area, which is freaking me out. And there's no one here to ask. We didn't have to do this before. We got taken straight through. I can't hear her crying or anything. Oh my gosh, this is literally the worst. I'm sure it's nothing, it's probably nothing, but it's just different to last time, so I just, and, I, and I'm not used to it, so. Oh, oh my goodness. What feels like after an absolute eternity. Oh, I got my girl back. She's very, very sleepy right now. Aren't you? <laughs> she is loving life. She was so cry last time. Scream So I'm hoping they said if she feeds well, if all of her obs are okay and she stays been happy, then we'll be able to take her home very soon. <laughs> You're making everyone smile. So I'm gonna get her dress. Oh, and then we're gonna give her a feed. And then we're gonna be all happy. Where's the big girl? Where's my big girl? Roll, roll, roll your bow. Gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. So we're just in the parents' room right now. She's just had a feed. Been discharged. Been discharged. Yeah. We're on our way home. Out of here. Someone's so tired that she can't be bothered to cry. <laughs> but she's so gorgeous. And she's got a little foot out as well. I know. Which is nice. So nice. To see her foot again. That was fully in the cast before. It's so nice because her little ankle must be like kind of stiff. Yeah, definitely. And it's nice that she gets that out to like yeah. flex the ankle before the whole thing comes off. In six weeks time. So good. We spoke Couldn't... to a surgeon who's so lovely and he said that the progress she's made is good. Um, and that we come back in six weeks and we go into the brace. Um, they'll x-ray her, obviously. Providing everything's okay on the x-ray, which he said it should be. He's expecting it to be. And he's the best, like, in the field. Then they'll be put in, she'll be put in the brace. And then this, which I didn't know and I'm so happy about, is that 
straight away when she goes into the brace, she's only in it for 22 hours a day. She so gets she gets two time. hours free time every day from the first in six weeks, basically. And then we work down, um, I can't remember how we said we work it down, my mind was all over the place because it was just when we were still in recovery downstairs. But we, we gradually build it down until the last three weeks, so three out of 12, she'll only be wearing it for bed. So which is good. so much better than I thought because that means she'll only actually be in the brace nine weeks, not 12. Yeah. But even the nine weeks, it will only be like small bits of time through the day, not yeah, like all really day. Good. And then the last three weeks, she doesn't even have the cast on during the day. The brace, sorry. It's just for bed. It's going to be so, so much better. To be able to hold her properly again without having to... Oh, I know. Use your muscles and I know. be awkward. They weighed her today and she weighed eight kilograms with the brace, with the cast on. And then they said they'll weigh the cast and deduct that to work out what she weighs. I should have asked. I'm always interested. But, um, yeah, let's get home. Yeah. We wanted to keep the original cast as for memories, but we weren't allowed to. No. I did ask him and I was like, he's like, no, it's it's contaminated. And at first I was a bit like, no, it's not. She didn't poop on it or anything. Um, and he said, yeah, but it's, it's I, I literally lose my job. Um, we can't take anything out of theatre. And then obviously I understood. I was like, oh, yes, sorry. I, I didn't even think about the fact that you can't take anything out of the theatre room. Um, so I completely was like, oh, yeah, no worries. It's not worth you losing your job over. So we couldn't keep it, but it's not a big deal. No. I've got my dad's We, we will be able to keep this one, though, because she'll get it taken off in the plaster room, not in theatre. Oh, so we yeah. will hopefully be able to keep so this no, one. No, we will, definitely. He said mm. I would, but the only reason I can't is because we can't take things out of the theatre room. I just realised, I just said I've got my dad's cast. It sounds like I've got like some freaky thing of my dad's. No, you have. It is <laughs> freaky. <isn't laughs> Chris hates Sorry, it. Neil. But it's manky and mouldy and disgusting. It's definitely getting put in the bin when no one's looking. It's not dad, don't worry. <laughs> my dad's my dad's mum actually kept it from when my dad was like 18 months old. And it's a cast from him when he broke his arm. And if you touch it's it, it'll so turn cute. to dust. It's like a mummy. <laughs> it's like an Egyptian mummified pot. It's disgusting. Come on. <laughs> so I come home and the first thing Jace wants to do... What do you want to do? I'm, I'm, I'm making a mess in the playroom, Mummy. You're making a mess in the playroom? Yeah. I'm messing the pillow and find I'm messing the pillow and find the cupcake game. You want to play the counting cupcake game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I make a mess too. And you want to make a mess? Yes, but look, it's already a mess now. Well, it is a little bit of a mess, isn't it? Yeah, but now we can find the cupcake game. No, we'll have to clean up first. Oh yes. <laughs> so thankfully, because Mila coped no, no. so well with the no. yeah. You got Mila's balls. I keep forgetting to buy batteries for that. Okay. Because she coped so well with the general, we were allowed to go home pretty quickly. So not much of a wait in the hospital at all, which I was very grateful for because obviously Chris wasn't allowed in and it was just a bit awkward him having to go and sit downstairs and be like, what's going on? So we managed to get this discharged pretty quickly. I'm so excited to finally be in the last the last half of the spiker cast. I was thinking about it in my head as it'd been like a quarter of the way there because then we have six weeks plus another six weeks in the brace after the cast. However, after today I'm feeling differently about that because I've realised that the brace will be nowhere near as bad as the cast. Especially as to start with, she gets two hours a day out of it. So it's just going to be so much better and so much easier and so much kinder on her. So I'm not seeing it as we're quarter of the way through. I'm now seeing it as we're halfway through. Because things will be so much easier when the cast comes off. I'm watching. <gasps> wow, clever boy. But yeah, only Mila could go for a little general anaesthetic, go through a little procedure and still be wide awake and rocking and rolling like anything else. They don't open, darling. They're just a toy. They're just a toy. I am going to get myself in the shower because I feel I, I feel like rubbish. Got up this morning at about half past five. I fed Mila at six. That was the last feed time that I could feed her. Um, and I think we might end the vlog here just because it's been a bit of a crazy day. 
It's not late or anything now, it's like afternoon. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon, which is just crazy that we're home at this time. I think we're just going to wind down. I'm gonna play with Jace, um, and then the girls want some help with their schoolwork. Esme needs some help with the schoolwork, so we're going to do that. And then, I think we might just pop on a movie. Mila's fine right now, she's happy, she's her usual self, but she might be a bit tired and groggy as the afternoon wears on. So we're going to end the vlog here. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching, and make sure you come back tomorrow um, to, see how she's, to see how she's getting on. Day one of part two of the Spiker cast journey. I'll show all the cast and things tomorrow. But thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Good night, guys. <laughs> thank you all so much for watching with me today. I hope you all enjoyed and understood all we touched upon. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe as we go in search of 10,000 subs, and give me a follow on Instagram as we're now targeting that 1,000 mark. Please have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are and whatever you're up to. And I'll see you all again in the next video.